Hey guys, this is a postscript to our SOS show videos. Maybe you've watched all the episodes. This is after we're back. Actually, I have a little sweat on me because I've been carrying all these in, laying them all out for you. This is our office. It looks like an episode of this old house. A couple of people comment and say, I love the old radiators. But yes, we are in an old house. This is our headquarters uh, just outside of Philadelphia. But um, I had 30 people who contacted me after the show. How was the show? What did you buy? So I thought the best way to do it is just show you video of what I picked up at the show. Um, and it's almost like being there. We already walked you around the show, but let's, let's start up here with the PPKs. Um, I'm going to try to do them in, in kind of an order, and anything special, I'll tell you about it. Uh, these are obviously early uh, commercial because of the high polish finish. Here's an unusual one, an RZM. And you guys all know what the RZM is because uh, you've seen the videos. But what makes this special, notice the 60 degree safety. It means it's a little bit later. All the early, uh, all the early RZMs were 90 degree safeties. This one is a 60 degree safety. And lo and behold, it, uh, serial number is 244, which means about 1938. And most of them were made in about 1935. So this is a second run and it's actually quite rare. A uh, couple other guns uh, that I got that are commercial. Uh, this was the buy of the show. If you watch the video, he showed me this and then I bought it. Um, I have somebody coming tomorrow to take a look at it. I'm going to do a whole separate video just on that because it's such a rare find. Uh, but that's actually nickel with gold wash, mostly gone, ivory grips, and presented to somebody with the initials JS, I believe. This you might gloss over, but I got some uh, late war PPK grips. A box mag and uh, most special of all a black party leader grip which is very rare and speaking of black grip ppks uh, let's start a new row here uh, these are both late war 22 caliber uh, there's some question as to why late in the war in 1944 they're still making them you see painted sights and this has a matching mag so we know from watching my videos this is a late war bank gun very very rare and this is just a late war 22 caliber. In fact, the serial number, you probably can't see it, serial number is, it's better here, 430, which is one of the, not 230, which is uh, the time you go to the doctor when you're 230, but um, this is 430, and uh, it was one of the last ones made in 1944. So look at the quality of workmanship, even at the end of the war, the high polish finish 22. Now, this is something I normally don't buy, but it came from a friend of mine, and uh, we'll put it on the website and sell it pretty quickly. But this is a post-war. You can tell by the alligator box. Uh, it has to be post-war. And if I pick up the gun, it's 9 millimeter in brand new condition, like brand new. And you can see it was made in the Ulm factory, which was post-war Walder. Oh, here's a PP. <laughs> You got it. This walked up at our table. It didn't actually have legs and walk up, but it, uh, somebody showed up with this. This is a very rare Persian PP. A small, uh, there was a small contract in, I think, 1938 that went to Persia, uh, and they were allied with the Nazis, uh, so that's a rare Persian. It comes in 9 millimeter, which you can tell right away because of the bottom release, and then you can also tell because it says 9 millimeter. Now, if you're astute, you notice that the slide legend is on the opposite side. All the PPK contracts uh, has a slide legend on the left-hand side. On this one, the slide legend from Walder is on the right-hand side. So a rare find. I hate to uh, disparage the HSC, but those are two standard HSCs. Not a lot to say about them. Let's move over to the P38s. Um, just some really nice P38s. This is an AC40, high polish finish. Kind of rare because AC40 was uh, the first dated year. Actually, the first year made. Well, they started making them in 39, but um, 1940 was the first year that they made them for the military. This is, at first glance, doesn't look like much, but it's actually an Eagle F, which is very rare. Dual tone Eagle F police. And uh, just so you know, this gun is, is very rare. Uh, the slide was made in the FN, the, uh, FN factory in Belgium. Uh, and we know that because of the slide legend is slightly different. Another police gun, but this time it's an Eagle L, not dual tone, 
but if we flip it over, you can see the Eagle L. Get my hand out of the way. And then this is just a standard P38. Let's quickly jump to the, to the radums. Uh, standard radums, but very nice. Most of these are the early slotted variation, uh, Nazi proofed. I've got several of them, but one that stands out is the Polish radum. Uh, it's got the Polish eagle. So this is pre-1930, actually it was dated. <laughs> it's dated 1939. Uh, and the, uh, we know the Nazis came in in September and took over the factory. So one of the last uh, uh, made under Polish contract. And then after that, they were made under Nazi occupation. These are Nazi proofed, slotted. Uh, this one, oh, this isn't slotted as well. But let's move on to the Lugers. This is a Black Widow. You would think uh, this, uh, and I did a video about uh, Black Widows. You want to go back and watch that. That's one of our most watched. Uh, but you notice this one has straw parts. Um, and you think, wow, how do you have a, a, a Black Widow with straw parts? You actually don't. This is a Krigoff. Uh, so it's a 1940. You can see the Krigoff logo. A 1940 Krigoff, pretty rare gun. And they can generally sell in the uh, 10,000 range, a little bit under maybe, um, because they only made a few hundred of them in 1940. Uh, here's another Krigoff, you can tell by the grips, also the Krigoff logo. And this one was made, it's an S code, so this one was made in 1936. Don't ask me how I know that, other than I read books. Let's jump to the other room. I put a couple one-offs over here because there's some rigs here. Let me start off with this one. This rifle, the same guy that sold me that engraved PP over there that you're dying to see more about, that uh, nickel engraved PP in the original box, uh, sold me this. And the reason it's cool, it's also a, an engraved Walther. You can see the Walther logo here. It's Eagle N, which means Nazi era. And it's a presentation dated 1944. Uh, we found the guy it was presented to uh, because the owner was able to research it. And he wrote, you can see the cost right there, but he wrote a whole dossier about the guy who this was presented to. It was presented to him on his birthday, and he was a teacher or a leader in the NSKK, which was their transportation corps. Uh, and he has all the documentation. There's a picture of him. He's the guy in the middle. And... There's his other instructors at the Transportation Corps School. So that was a great find. And again, already spoken for. Uh, up here, we have a Japanese Nambu. I can tell it's early because of the small trigger guard. The later ones had a larger trigger guard. Small trigger guard, so how early is it? Uh, the, it's uh, 3.6, which makes it 1928. One of the, well, it is actually the earliest I've ever seen and it comes with an original holster. Talk about early, here's a World War I era Luger, not in the best of a condition, a little beat up, but it's from 1910, which was the first year they made the military contract. You can see the military markings from 1910, making this a very rare gun, and it's, it comes as a rig. Speaking of Black Widows, we've had some before. This is a Black Widow as well, but the full rig. Also a uh, Browning high power full rig. I did a video on high powers. You can check it out. Now you see one 1911 here. I actually went to the show hoping to buy a bunch of 1911s. I saw a lot of them. They were all, in my opinion, overpriced, at least not at a level where I could buy them and resell them and make any money. Uh, while I was at the show, this one walked up to my table and uh, I bought it uh, because it is, um, it's an, it is a 1911, uh, but not a Colt. It's a Union Switch and Signal, uh, which those of you know, that's pretty rare. These uh, mostly went to the Air Corps, at least from my reading, uh, maybe all of them, but at least most of them went to the Air Corps. Uh, I think, well, we did a video about production numbers and I think we said there's only about 30,000 made compared to the uh, near million that were made by Remington and Colt. And finally, a one-off, which is just a nice uh, CZ, which makes this 
a little bit un, uh, rarer because it's police marked with a matching mag. So that was a nice find. Uh, these are still fairly cheap, so get them while they're hot. Now, we also sold some guns. I'm just going to highlight a couple. We sold about 12 guns at the show. Uh, some of these, these guns you actually know about. Uh, this, I did a video on the Luftwaffe drilling, and we sold one at the show. We also did a video about the MP40, and if you go back and watch that one, we said we got two MP40s in the same week. We sold one at the show. That's a full auto, so we have to wait for the paperwork to come through, uh, but that's a full auto MP40. And finally, the Johnson. Uh, if you want a good laugh, if you want a LOL or LMAO or whatever that is, uh, if you want a good laugh, go to the Johnson video, um, and I talk about... Uh, the Johnson, we sold one. Those are the three highlights of our sales, uh, fairly high ticket items that we sold at SOS. So I feel like I'm doing an advertisement for SOS. Um, and and I, of course, I want you to come to the SOS. It's only, the show of shows is only once a year. And I've talked a lot about how cool it is. We look forward to it every year. But it costs about, me about $1,500 per person to attend the show. So I have to go and buy lots of treasures. You're welcome to come, but even better, just watch our YouTube channel and we'll, let, we'll go and buy them for you. Make sure they're all correct and original, authenticate them, and then put them on our website and hopefully you'll go there and buy some of our treasures. Hey, thanks for watching. Wait till next year, it'll be even better. <laughs>